Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to show you how to calculate the energy stored in a capacitor by putting charge onto a capacitor. So here we have an example. We have a capacitor right there. We have the distance between the plates. We have the area of the plates. There's air in between the plates. And we have a battery attached to it but with a switch. And when we close the switch, that means we now have a, com a complete circuit, charges from the battery will be pushed by the battery onto the capacitor plates. At first it will be one charge and you put a second charge on and a third charge and charges will just be put onto the capacitor plates. Each time a charge gets put on that will cause a charge on the other side of the capacitor plate to be pushed towards the battery and that this plate will become negatively charged until the capacitor is fully charged. When the capacitor is fully charged the repulsive forces of all the charges that pile up on one side of the capacitor will now be able to push back against the push of the battery. When the two forces are equal to each other, the capacitor will then be fully charged. It will contain charge Q onto the capacitor with a potential difference of V pushing the charges on there. And so the question now is, and of course the capacitance will have capac capacitance, the capacitor will have capacitance C, and so we know the relationship that the charge put onto the capacitor is equal to the charge, oop, let me start over again on this one. The capacitance is defined as the charge that gets pushed onto the capacitor Q divided by the voltage which does the pushing. So once the capacitor is filled with charge, it now contains a certain amount of energy. It's kind of like compressing a spring, putting charges together since they repel each other. you got to push. The battery has to push to get the charges on there. It will then store potential energy onto the capacitor. The question is how much? To figure out how that works is we go back to a simple system like that here. Let's say we have a capacitor that's fully charged, there's an electric field across it. The difference between the plates is potential V and their distance D apart from one another. Now we take a small charge right here, let's call it positive charge Q, and we're going to push it with a force F all the way across the capacitor plate to the other side. Now obviously that charge, being positive, wants to be on the right side of the capacitor plate because that's negatively charged and does not want to be on the other side because that's positively charged. So you actually have to do work. You have to push to get it there. And so we can say the amount of work done to get it there is equal to the force times the distance. And of course, since the electric field can be defined, E can be defined as the ratio of the force felt by test charge divided by the size of the test charge. We can say, therefore, that F can be written as E times Q. And so we can replace that for the F over there. So the work done is equal to E times Q times D. And then you remember that E times D is basically the potential difference between the plates. So the amount of work done to bring one charge across the capacitor would be equal to the potential difference times Q. So that's the work done to take one charge and move it across the capacitor plate. That's the same amount of work as it would take to take one more charge and add it to the capacitor. Same amount of energy. So how much energy does it take or how much work does it take to put all the charges on there? Well, when we place the first charge on there, so imagine we have the capacitor plates and it's connected to the battery, like so, and now we place the first charge onto the capacitor. How much work does that take? Well, the amount of work that it takes to put the first charge there is equal to the potential difference when we place the first charge there times Q. So what is the potential difference when we place the first charge onto the capacitor? Well the answer is at that point it is equal to zero because the potential difference is simply equal, it simply depends upon how much charge you have across the capacitor. And if there's no charge across it, you just now put the first charge on there. Remember, when it's fully charged, it has trillions and trillions of charges on there. So you place the first one there, there's really no potential difference, so therefore, that is equal to zero. How much work does it take to put the last one on there? Well, to put the last one on there, let's call that N. There's let's say n charges placed onto the capacitor, well that's going to be equal to the potential difference when you place the last one, the nth one on there, times q, and so that would simply be equal to v times q. That would be the energy required to put the last charge on there because at that point the capacitor is basically fully charged and you just place one more additional charge on there. So what would be the average energy, to, to the, av the average amount of work that it would take to put an average charge on there during this process. Well, the average work 
will simply be equal to the amount of work it takes for the first one plus the amount of work it takes for the last one divided by two. That will give you the average. So it would be uh, the work done for the first one plus the work done for the last one divided by two, which is equal to zero plus V times Q, which is, oh, divided by two, which is one half V times Q. So that's the average amount of work that it takes to put one charge onto the capacitor plate. So how much work does it take to put all of them on the capacitor plate? Well, the total work is equal to the average work times the number of charges you put on there. In other words, it is equal to 1 half V times Q multiplied times N. And how much Q times N? How much the charge on a single charge times the number of charges? Well, that would have to add up to the total charge placed on the capacitor. So therefore, this is equal to 1 half V times Q. That is the total amount of work, the total amount of energy it takes to put all those charges onto the capacitor and fully charge it with a potential difference of V across the capacitor. So therefore, if that's how much work it takes to get all the charges on there, then that will be how much energy it has when the capacitor is fully charged. So in other words, the energy, which we use the variable U to indicate that, the energy will be equal to one half V times Q or one half Q times V, however you want to write it. That is the total energy of a charged capacitor. Now there's different ways of writing it. Since we can write C is equal to Q divided by V, with other words, we can also say that the charge is equal to C times V, we could replace the charge by C times V. If we do that, and let me come over here, we then have the potential energy is equal to one half times, instead of Q, we can write C times V, so it would be C times V times the V that we still have. So in other words, that's equal to one half C V squared. That would be also a way of writing the energy stored on a capacitor. And finally, we can replace the V by Q over C, right? So we can say V is equal to Q divided by C by exchanging the V and the C and replace the V by Q over C. And when, they do th when we do that, we get U is equal to one half times Q times V. But instead of Q, we're going to write, oh, instead of V, we're going to write Q over C. So one half Q times Q over C. So in other words, that's equal to one half Q squared divided by C. So there's three ways in which we can write the energy stored in capacitor. We can say that, write it as one half QV or one half CV squared or one half Q squared divided by C. In all three cases, that is the energy stored on a single capacitor.